All right, at the end of the last video, I got my sketch into Illustrator. I onion skinned it by taking its opacity down to 50%. Another way you can do that when you're not in isolation mode is you can just double click next in your layer to get the layer options. And then you can just click on dim images too. And so that's a, another way to get the low opacity. And because I already dimmed it to 50%, now it's dimmed to like 25%, right? But because mine's so dark anyway, that's as long as you can see it, that's going to be nice. Then I used the shape tools, just like we did in Photoshop when we did our emoji for exercise two. I just built a shape. But shapes are different in Illustrator. I mean, in some ways they're the same. For one, when I build multiple shapes, like I'll build another one, just like it did in Photoshop, It will make its own, what is it doing? <laughs> oh, so that's what happens when you're selecting on a layer that's locked. So you got to be selecting on the layer that you want to impact. But remember, these layers are actually just organizations. So as I make a new one, it's going to automatically make a new, not a new layer like it does in Photoshop, but it will add a path within that layer. I'll make a third. Right now, how can we start to manipulate these in Photoshop? We could hit command T. We would play with warp. Do not hit command T in Illustrator. Instead, you just use the large selection tool. The black move tool at the top, the large selection tool immediately. As soon as you click on a path, as long as the layer is not locked, then you can change its proportions. You can stretch it and scale it. You can rotate it by clicking outside of the box, right? But that's it, that's all you can do. And that's mostly what we did in Photoshop, right? So how do you warp it? Remember how useful warp was? In Illustrator, you warp by going to the small selection tool, the direct selection tool, the white arrow, and you click off so that you don't see anything, and then you hover over until you hit an anchor point. So if you need to know where the anchor points are, you can click in the middle and it will show them to you. But if I click this here, it doesn't reselect it. So what I have to do is hover over it while it's white. And then I can move it independently. And it gives me the anchor point properties. So the direct selection tool is how you can select exact anchor points. Along with those anchor points, if there's a curve, you'll have the handles, which you can manipulate side to side. If you want to manipulate them both at the same time, you hold down, you can uh, hold down command to make it fully independent. You can hold down shift to lock it towards 90 degrees or 45 degrees or zero degrees. There's just different variations. But see how that changes the curve on both sides. It's nice to start with shapes because they'll be made with as few anchor points as possible. But you can get some pretty complicated shapes with just those few anchor points. Now, I said I, I wanted to make this eyeball, right? The problem is the eyeball has a white shape in it. So why can't I just make another like we did in Photoshop? Why can't I just make another circle? I'll hold down shift so it's a perfect circle. And instead of having it filled with black, I can click on the fill icon here to bring up the color. I can fill it with white. And then I can use the large selection to move it where I want it. Okay, the problem with that is if that's my finished logo, it is no longer a black shape. It is a black and a white shape. So this is a really important skill that Photoshop does not have, where I can cut this vector out of this vector to make a donut shape, a more, much more complex shape. So to do that, I select both of them. These are called overlapping paths. So I have a white circle on top of a black circle. I'm going to hold down shift to select both of them. I can also select them by clicking on the little 
circles next to their path. These are paths. They're all in one layer. <laughs> okay. Once they're both selected, you can see they're both highlighted red there. Then I can go to Window. We've already used Transparency, and I put it off to the sidebar because it's useful. Now I'm going to go to Window, and I want you to put Pathfinder on. Pathfinder, you should slide into the sidebar. Looks like this, like three overlapping paths. Pathfinder allows you to merge together. So that just took the two overlapping paths and it made it all the same, matching the properties of the one on the top. You can do Command Z to undo that. Pathfinder can also exclude minus what's on top from what's behind. So that's going to punch a hole in that black circle behind. Now that is a black shape vector. And so that is good for my eye. So I'm going to use the large selection tool, hold down shift to lock its proportions, scale it down. And I can move it into place. Use command uh, plus to zoom in. And there we go. Now the problem is it doesn't quite match my sketch exactly, right? <laughs> because I built it bigger and then shrunk it into place. And I can't now select that circle independent of this circle because they've been cut out of each other. So this is why we practice and we learn. So let's try it again. I'm going to build the black circle first, hold down shift so it's a perfect circle. I can use my arrow keys to nudge it into place. I can use transparency so that I can see where the circle is I want to cut out. Then I can make another circle. Hold down shift so it's a perfect circle. I can fill this with white just for the time being. Use the large selection tool to move it in place. Maybe make it just a little bit bigger, holding down shift. And now, if I select both of them by holding down shift or clicking here and holding down shift, now the overlapping paths are selected. I go to my Pathfinder tool and I minus the, the front from the back. Right? And then I select it and I can take its transparency back up to 100 or opacity back up to 100. So now it's shaped right. The problem is that circle goes beyond my sketch. So how can I change that? I can't change it by using the large selection tool because that's going to squeeze everything. Instead, I need to use the small selection tool. Click off of it, hover around that anchor point, and drag it in and under where my line would be. Next, how can I make, because that's a shape, and that's how to cut out one shape. How do I make the, the shape of the eye? The eye is a good focal point of a head, right? Maybe I don't like how it squashed it on that side. I want more black there. But I've only got these anchor points to play with. So I can hover over it, and then I can play with just this side of the curve. Click on it with the small selection tool, the white direct selection tool and pull that handle up just on that side. So you have so much control. But to do this, I could try it with a shape. I could build a long rectangle, right? And then I can use the large selection tool and I can tilt it down. And then I can use the small selection tool and I can hover over this anchor point. Maybe you have to click off of it first. Yeah, it doesn't have one in the middle. And then if I want to change this from a straight to a curve, which is what I want, I need to click on it and then drag out from it. But it doesn't work with the selection tool. I have to do that with the pen tool. So to do curved 
what look like lines, even though they're going to be shapes with an inside and outside, I need to do something different. And that's where the next tool comes in. This is called the pen tool. The pen tool, you click to start an anchor point, And then you just move to where you want your next anchor point to be and click. If you just click, it will stay a straight. But if you click and hold, you can turn it into a curve. It pulls out those handles, right? Then it's automatically going to be a curve for the next point, which is a little annoying, honestly. But just go with it. And then it will be a straight for the next point. So if you want it to be a curve, then you go with it. And then it just keeps continuing like that. That's why it's really nice to have black shapes to follow. And depending on how complex your shapes are, mine are pretty complex, this can take a little while. So I'm going to shortcut it a little bit here. It could finish up right here. And you can see why thin lines are a real pain, right? And then you have to end it close to where you began it in order for it to be what's called a closed path instead of an open path. I pulled it too far there. So Command Z, very helpful. Add a little curve. This is for the upper eye. And close it up by clicking on the original. So you see when you're on the original anchor that you started, you'll have a little circle next to your pin tool. That will close the path. All right. Now that I have that, What's nice is I can treat that like it's a shape. And then I can edit individual anchor points on it. Individual curves. And isolate them. Until I have exactly what I want. But what about all this stuff, right? I can always take its transparency down to see where my sketch is underneath. And if I want to flatten it out here, I have to play with those curves. And you can play with them so they're giving you a different shape on each side. And you can play with them from both angles. Now this, this point here, that's the end of a straight. If they don't have handles, they are straight. So what if I want to turn that into curves? That's where the tool that is underneath the pin tool within its drawer is called the anchor point tool. The shortcut for that is shift C. I don't usually use it, but if I click on that and then drag out, I can turn a straight point into a curved point, like so. The problem is it's curved on both ends. So then I have to use my small selection tool and drag back one of those curve handles all the way back to its source so that it can be straight on one side of the anchor point and curved on the other. So this is where the pin tool is a bit of a headache. Because the only curve I want to manipulate is the one coming out of it on this side. Like that. But I wanted to show you the pen tool. And it will give you really nice efficiency of, sh of uh, shapes, especially for curves. And it would be best if I drew most of my logo design as a pen tool, at least in the beginning, because it will really limit how many anchor points there are. 
and it will let me kind of refine it 